Let me try it, all right? Sorry. <clears throat> and I will send thee to the Northland too, and thou shalt be amazed at what I shall do, for I shall gather them. How oh, I shall gather them. Yes, I shall gather them back home from the Northland too, from, from Russia too. And I will send thee to the Southland too, and thou shalt be amazed at what I shall do, for I shall gather them. Oh, I shall gather them. Yes, I shall gather them back home from the Southland too, and Australia too. And I will send thee to the east land too and thou shalt be amazed at what i shall do for i shall gather them oh i shall gather them oh i shall gather them back home 
land too and from china too and i will send thee to the west land too and thou shalt be amazed at what i shall do for i shall gather them oh i shall gather them yes i shall gather them back home At, from hawaii to hawaii is the furthermost point west from jerusalem amen i try it with me a little bit and i will send thee to the north to the north land too and thou shalt be amazed at what i shall do for i shall gather them oh i shall gather them yes i shall gather them back home from the northland too and from russia too and i will send thee to the southland too and thou shalt be amazed at what i shall do for i shall gather them oh i shall gather them yes i shall gather them back home from the southland too yes from australia too and i will send thee to the eastland too and thou shalt be amazed at what i shall do for i shall gather them yes i shall gather them yes i shall gather them back home from the eastland too yes from china too and i will send thee to the westland too and thou shalt be amazed at what i shall do for i shall gather them yes i shall gather them yes i shall gather them back home from the westland too from hawaii too hallelujah hallelujah let's give the lord a big clap offering <laughs> hallelujah sheila my hallelujah I believe it's thrilling to be living in the time that the prophet spoke about. We're living in probably the most thrilling and exciting age of all time. Amen. Hallelujah. These last 40 years have been very exciting. Totally on the in the plan of God, the fulfillment of the prophetic word. And I believe that we're in the culmination because of course the Bible says that the generation that sees the budding of the fig tree will also see the coming of the Lord. Amen. This generation will not pass away until all be fulfilled. And as we're now in this time in which we're just moving into the 40th year, uh, the 40th anniversary of the founding of the state of Israel, uh, the generation that saw has seen Israel come into being will also see the coming of the Lord in his power and in his glory. We should get excited about it uh, for not only 
only do we need to watch the budding of the tree, but we need to watch all of the aspects involved in connection with the fig tree. Hallelujah. And see God's purposes at work. I want to speak to you tonight concerning the ingathering of the exiles. We'll read a, a, a number of verses. Let's turn with a, to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, and I will begin with verse 11. Isaiah 11, perhaps I'll start with verse, uh, verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people to which shall the nation seek, and his rest shall be glorious. <coughs> and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the isles of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the world. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. These are two important aspects. Amen. Amen. Notice that uh, that uh, uh, concerning the fact that that uh, uh, Ephraim and Judah shall not vex nor envy one another. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and men make men go over dry shod. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Israel. Egypt, praise the Lord. Reading also from Jeremiah tonight. We'll begin with Jeremiah chapter 29. All of these chapters are tremendous when you get home. Read them even a, a little more extensively. Isaiah chapter 29. And we'll begin with verse 12. I mean, Jeremiah, sorry, Jeremiah chapter 29. Beginning with verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places. Whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Praise the Lord. Now notice this. He's going to bring them again. Amen. Hallelujah. He's going to gather them from all the nations and gather them from all the places. There's not going to be a nation where they have been driven that they will not be gathered from. Praise the Lord. That's the turning of his captivity. And he's going to cause them to come and to be uh, uh, back in the land of Israel as already part of them are in fulfillment of this prophetic word. 
Jeremiah chapter 31. That whole 31st chapter is tremendous. Uh, it, it memorizes much of the 31st chapter. It is one of those tremendous chapters uh, all the way through. Praise the Lord. And perhaps we'll start from verse 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, Will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people? Thus saith the Lord, The people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest... The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Hallelujah. And here we see the manner of God's ingathering of them back from the nations of the world, not being chased by their enemy, but being drawn by the loving kindness of the Lord back unto their land. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Again, verse 4, again I I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. And this is happening today. Amen. The planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. Amen. And, and there's such an abundance all through that area of Samaria where we're seeing this fulfillment. Verse 6, for there shall be a day that the watchman upon the mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. For thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations, Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. And this is what God wants Ephraim to do. Amen. The watchman, I want you to get this. This word watchman, usually in Hebrew, the word watchman is the word shomer, meaning a watchman. This is the normal word that we use. And even when we speak concerning the Lord watching over Israel, we usually use that word shomer. And yet in this particular verse, there is a different word that is used. Amen. And it's only used in verse 6 of Jeremiah. And the word that's used is the same word that in modern Hebrew means Christians. Hallelujah. The notes ream upon on the mountain will cry and say arise ye and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God for thus saith the Lord sing with gladness for Jacob shout among the chief of the nations amen and God has been raising up people in the last uh, uh, 10 years especially I would say less than that that we've seen the fullness of the cry coming up amongst the Christians a publishing and a declaration in behalf of Israel amongst the Christians a, 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 a time of singing with gladness in these days God's been bringing forth Hebraic songs and people have been singing the the songs that have come from the Jewish people uh, and their songs that have come from the scripture uh, and people are singing songs in English and Danish and French uh, and all kinds of languages uh, but they're singing it 
with the Hebrew beat. Amen. And the rhythm of the Jewish people. They're singing with gladness for Jacob. And publishing among the chief of the nations. And there the Lord commands us to say. O Lord save thy people. The remnant of Israel. What is he saying here? Here he's not speaking concerning the salvation of the soul but here he's speaking concerning the salvation meaning the complete in gathering of his people amen hallelujah and we as Christians are to be those that publish and sing among the nations and that we're the ones that begin to have the cry of God within our soul in which we say oh Lord save thy people the remnant of Israel for the very next verse he says this behold I will bring them amen after we have cried after we as Christians amen that stand upon the Mount Ephraim after we're the ones that cry out to the Lord in their behalf then the Lord answers us in verse 8 I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame the woman with child and her that with tra which travaileth with child together a great company shall return thither hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord uh, notice uh, they shall come with weeping with supplication will I lead them I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble for I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. Now that next portion, all of it is tremendous. Uh, we could preach all night on any one of those phrases. Hallelujah. Because of the tremendous blessing. Uh, but I want to say this. Uh, we cannot sit on our, our laurels. Amen. Uh, the fact that God has blessed us uh, and given us a vision for the ingathering of the Jewish people back to Israel. Uh, the fact that many of us uh, have already participated uh, not only in prayer and in giving, but also in going and in helping to secure and procure the release of the Jewish people. We cannot just leave it, but it is a continual cry that God wants to be in our soul. Amen. He wants us to continue to believe until they have all come from the nation where they have been scattered hallelujah praise the Lord and we have witnessed a modern day miracle several years ago when supernaturally God intervened in Ethiopia and caused many of the Ethiopian Jews to flee to neighboring states because of the famine I believe it took the famine to bring the the release of Eth Ethiopian Jews so they could return back to Zion and when they were released into neighboring nations because of the famine God worked a further miracle and made it possible in just about a week's time for about 15,000 of them to gather back to Israel hallelujah now God promised the 
physical and gathering of his people uh, in order that then he might work uh, that salvation, that complete work of deliverance uh, in their spirit as well. Amen. And which he says he will give them a new heart uh, and a new spirit, uh, a heart to know him, uh, a spirit to seek after him. But the first portion is the physical deliverance. Uh, just as he delivered the Jewish people from Egypt before he brought them into Canaan's land and caused them to receive an inheritance and to know him in a greater way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think, I don't know, you Sometimes you wish that you had written down certain facts and ideas as God begins to reveal them to you. But as far as I can remember, we were the earliest group of Christians that were promoting the ingathering of the Jewish people from the nations. I, we had not met any other Christians back in around 71, 72 when God began to speak to us concerning it. We hadn't in these days there are a number of books that have been written on the subject. There are a number of people that travel and speak in connection with Israel and the return of the, of the Jews from amongst the nations back to Zion but in those days no one was speaking this would be like 71, 72 but night after night God birthed it in our spirit hallelujah and actually many of the people that are speaking on this subject today are people that were in those initial meetings and had God birthed into their spirit as well hallelujah praise the Lord the Lord took us on a trip around the world and in one month's time sister Susan and I traveled about 55,000 miles when we started on that trip we weren't sure why God was sending us he had given us an amazing word from the sands of, of Zanzibar to the coral of Bora Bora from Cabaros to Nova Sibirsk, from the islands to the captives, my people have caught the vision. And the Lord said that to us. It was such a strange word. And we arranged to travel just as God had said, from the sands of Zanzibar to the coral of Bora Bora. Zanzibar being an island just off of Dar es Salaam. One of our brothers is here from Tanzania. Tanzania and uh, and uh, Bora Bora over in the Tahitian group of islands uh, and then when the Lord had said from Kabaros to Novosibirsk uh, from eastern Siberia to the central part of Russia where Siberia begins uh, and which uh, all of the captives uh, of his people were we didn't understand the greatness of the word uh, so many times when we begin to fulfill a word from God we do it to the best of our ability and God honors us and yet I look back and I see that it was such a stupendous word that God gave that taught volumes amen it was only a sentence in the middle of the night it was only a sentence that God dropped into the mouth of one of his servants it was only one a sentence uh, that compelled us to rise up uh, and do the bidding of the Lord. Uh, and yet it was a sentence that shaped our lives uh, in ways that we are still feeling uh, that great shaping of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, because from the moment we put our feet on Zanzibar, uh, the first person we said hello to, to was a Jewish person and by the time we had stepped our 
feet on the next island and the first person we met was a Jewish person and from the time we went from island to island to island and we got to Bora Bora which is just a little coral atoll uh, right in the middle uh, of that great ocean that South Pacific Ocean and yet uh, when we had just gotten off the plane the plane doesn't land on a proper airstrip uh, they have little boats that come out to the airstrip that adjoins uh, uh, adjoins the island uh, and as we were going to step on to the jetty or on to uh, the dock uh, as we were stepping on uh, there was just one man standing there uh, and he wanted to get a little tourist business uh, for folks to come and stay in his little hotel or motel uh, and by the time we knew just to take one look at him and know that he too was Jewish. God took us all over the world 55,000 miles in a month to show us the scattering. Amen. Sometimes we need to see the first stage in order to be able to believe for the second. Amen. For the promise of the Lord is He that scattered Israel will gather him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That great in gathering. Hallelujah. And every time you meet a Jewish person if you meet them in any place other than Israel you can look at them and know that they're a candidate for the gathering amen hallelujah praise the Lord just an hour or so ago in Richmond I met a Jewish man I had I had heard of his name before and I wondered if the name were Jewish and the first thing I said was what is your name oh what uh, uh, derivation and he said I am Jewish hallelujah any time one meets say Jew in any place other than Israel you've got somebody to exercise your faith on hallelujah hallelujah for the promise of God is he that scattered Israel will gather him where did he say he would gather him back to the country from whence he was sent amen he was sent from the Holy Land from Israel and he's not going to be gathered back to Uganda or gathered back to some other to Miami or New York City even though some of them think it's greater than Israel some of the Jewish people but no that's not his his plan that's man's plan amen but any time you see a Jewish person and they're not in Israel you begin to believe God he that scattered Israel will gather him and of course today there's not a lot to entice Jewish people to come back you know if we think the economy is beginning to get bad in other parts of the world it is much worse in Israel and men of great learning and knowledge and ability they make what not even what a McDonald's sales young person person makes in this country amen they they are living with four and five degrees working from early morning to late at night and most of them don't have the salary that a McDonald's employee would have in this country so if a person's going because of money that's not where they're going to they've got to have a stronger motivation than that there's got to be a 
compelling force. Uh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! And that compelling force uh, is that mighty hand of God. Hallelujah! For he that scattered Israel, uh, it wasn't Hitler that scattered them. Uh, amen. Uh, it wasn't any other tyrant or, or despot uh, or world leader. Uh, but God was the one that scattered them. Amen. And God likewise will be the one to gather them. Amen. Hallelujah. Now with times being difficult there's not a lot to entice somebody to come back to Israel. And there might be some uh, that see even the news and makes them a little nervous. Uh, and why would they want to go back now? Well, we've got this further promise in verse 10. He that scattered Israel uh, will gather him and keep him. Hallelujah. As a shepherd doth his flock. That marvelous keeping power of the Lord. And I want to say something to you folks. Don't you be worried about us over in Jerusalem. Because those of us that are involved in the gathering process. Are being kept just like those that are gathered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God impresses on you to pray a good prayer for us do that uh, if he impresses on you to give a little extra uh, because of inflation do that uh, but don't be worried about us uh, hallelujah the safest place in all the world to be uh, is in the place of the ingathering uh, when God's the one that's doing it amen uh, hallelujah praise the Lord uh, he that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. And I want to say about our folks in Israel, God bless them all. Not one of them is fearful or afraid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, they get in the prayer meeting and pray, but they're not praying for their safety nor protection. Amen. Hallelujah. They're they're praying for higher things, greater things, uh, because they know, ha <laughs> ha, hallelujah, that he is the keeper. Oh, bless the Lord. And he it keeps him as a shepherd, doth his flock, hallelujah. Notice verse 11, for the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Ha <laughs> ha, hallelujah, it's the Lord's ransom, it's the Lord who is the redeemer, praise the Lord, and we're not saying that the hand of the enemy is not strong. Strong. Certainly the hand of the enemy is stronger than Jacob. But the hand of the enemy is not stronger than he that keepeth Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, but Israel could conquer all of the Arab forces and nations. Not if the Arabs got united. No, they couldn't. You know what God's allowed is for the enemy to be in disarray. <laughs> Amen. That's the tactic of the Lord. Just keeping them in disarray with no unity. But Israel wouldn't stand a chance if they got united. Amen. But we don't need to worry because he that is keeping Israel just keeps the enemy in disarray. <laughs> Hallelujah. But know this. And the Israelis know it. And when you meet the important ones, the powerful ones, they all will tell you that in every war they've been a bunch of bunglers. Amen. They may have had some great and glorious feats 
seats and we've heard about them all. But when you begin to hear the men talk that were on the Entebbe raid and the men talk that were in the Six Day War and the people talk that were involved in some of these occasions, they bumbled and bungled so many times. But it was the fact that God was making the difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because they, some of them don't even realize the greatness of what they're involved in. I sometimes look at the Israeli soldiers and I feel sadness because the many of them, most of them 18 year olds, they're kids. They're not 18 year olds like American 18 year olds that are already out on their own. This is the, the favorite son of a Jewish mom that spoiled them and pampered them. And they're like a 16 year old going off to battle. Amen. When I look and see them, my heart is uh, oftentimes heavy. When I see the situation there, many of them don't realize those great things that they're involved in. Amen. Many of them uh, have a sense of patriotism, but they don't realize these tremendous prophecies that God is fulfilling in our day. Of course, the enemy is roaring. Amen. He's not going to sit still and just let God do it. That's why God uses words like he ransomed them. That's a strong word. God ransoms his people. Amen. Not just saved them from their, from their situation and brought them in. He ransomed them from the hand that was stronger than they. And we're going to see some situations in which God's going to have to ransom his people. Hallelujah. But he's going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Then we get verse 12. Therefore shall they come and sing in the height of Zion. Why? Because they've been ransomed. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil for the young of the flock and of the herd and their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Oh, ha, ha. do you see this day that's coming? We, this is our ge generation that's going to see it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning. There will be mourning. But he said, I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them. Why does he say he's going to comfort them? They're going to need to be comforted. Although they've been ransomed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I will make them rejoice from their sorrow. Hallelujah. They're going to need to that rejoicing in place of the sorrow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says, my people, verse 14, shall be satisfied with my goodness saith the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, my people shall be satisfied with my goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, well, what, uh, what part do I have to play? We've got to go back to verse 7. Uh, and this is our part. Uh, God says to us to sing with gladness for Jacob, uh, to shout among the chief of the nations, uh, publish ye, praise ye, and say, 
Oh, Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. We have a responsibility to use our faith to believe God for the completion of the end gathering. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This uh, just in the last few months since around October, uh, God has been uh, doing something wonderful. He's just taken Gorbachev's heart uh, in his hand. Uh, the scripture says the hand of the king, uh, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Hallelujah. And I'm, I know God's got his hand on Gorbachev's heart. Uh, there are too many wonderful things happening you know even people in the world the commentators some of them they don't want to believe what's happening because it's such a turnaround and somehow they're just sure it must be a ploy but listen man's not smart enough even to work a ploy if it's in the favor of God's people do you understand what I'm saying the enemy doesn't allow that unless God hath worked the change. Amen. And God has worked a change in Gorbachev's heart. And thank God I was there the night that Eden Nudell arrived at Ben Gurion Airport. By the time she got off the plane I felt like I'd been in Holy Ghost revival. I think we were the only Christians among the group. But everybody was singing a, a scriptural songs and we were singing the songs of faith in Hebrew and we were just waiting for the plane to come and God had given us a word amen sometime before that he would give a direct uh, air route between Moscow and Tel Aviv uh, so that the Jews could come straight home without going to Vienna and uh, God just moved upon Arm and Hammer the billionaire to uh, alone the use of his executive airplane and to bring Eda Nudel directly home Moscow to Tel Aviv amen I believe it's the earnest of something more amen hallelujah but God often gives you a little bit hallelujah to keep you believing hallelujah that what he's done in measure he will do in an unlimited form hallelujah praise the Lord when Eda Nudel was released I just said to the people it'll only be a few days and Vladimir Shlepak will be released and just a few days later they released him and more have been released and this last year more Jewish people were released from Russia than in the last decade almost God has worked a miracle hallelujah but while he's working we need to come Continue to believe the Lord. Amen. You say, what has it got to do with us? It's part of bringing back the king. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we're not going to, we're not going to enter into that millennial period without them. Amen. Hallelujah. All you got to do is read some of Isaiah's prophecies concerning what's going to happen to them and read Jeremiah and some of the other prophets. We're not going to enter in without them. Amen. Hallelujah. But God wants us to believe for that hastening for them. Also I want you to see this. Last night I preached on uh, say not uh, yet four months and then comes the harvest. This is part of the harvest. Amen. The ingathering of the Jewish people in a physical sense unto Israel will bring an in gathering hallelujah among the nations of those that will come to know Jesus Christ amongst the Gentiles of the world we're going to see a simultaneous harvest taking place among all of the people
peoples of the earth. Praise God. So great salvation is the way the writer to the Hebrews spoke about it. We're living in that day and God doesn't want us to get a local vision and get so full of our local vision that we miss what he's doing in the earth. Have a local vision. Stir the pot where you are but look up while you're stirring. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God continue to turn you around. Don't just look in one direction but while you're stirring. Hallelujah. Let God turn you continually to the north, the south, the east, the west. Hallelujah. And while you're turning let your faith be released for God's purposes in the earth. Hallelujah. I believe we're going to see a further in gathering of Ethiopian Jews back to Israel. Amen. I believe that. I think that's the reason the second famine's got to come. Amen. So that the people will, God will bring a release because what happened when they, the first uh, Ethiopian Jews, uh, they, the word slipped out uh, to the news media before everybody was brought in. And when they published uh, that the Sudan was helping uh, one of the men who had been helping in this relief uh, 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 uh program he was he immediately uh got persecuted uh, and it was a terrible thing that took place uh, and so God just had to let a period of time pass by that people sort of got their mind off of that great victory uh, so that other things happened in the earth uh, so that now now that they're not thinking about it uh, more Ethiopian Jews can leave and God can work out another plan and bring them back to Zion. He's going to bring them from the south. Ethiopia is directly under Israel. He's going to bring them from the north. Moscow is directly over Jerusalem, directly north of Jerusalem. He's going to reach out to the nations of the world and call his people home. Hallelujah. I want to read a verse that God spoke to me tonight on the platform. I, I was so blessed by this verse. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This is when Jesus is standing in that little synagogue in Nazareth. Hallelujah. And he's talking about the Spirit of the Lord being on him. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind <laughs> hallelujah and when I read that tonight uh, when God said to me the recovering of sight to the blind is part of what you're anointed for uh, hallelujah that's the Jewish people he's not speaking here of the physically blind you read it in context with whatever else he's saying but that recovering of sight to the blind is the belief that those who have had a veil upon their eyes that that veil is going to be lifted hallelujah and that recovery of sight hallelujah because of the anointing of the Lord that is upon us hallelujah praise be to the name of the Lord God has raised us up to believe for the ingathering of the ex Exiles. Amen. He who hath scattered them will gather them and he will keep them as a shepherd doth his sheep. Praise the Lord and our Heavenly Father we do thank Thee because You've given us the privilege of being involved in Your programs. You've given us the privilege of being involved Lord in those things that You're doing in the earth and let us not be indifferent in any way but Lord let us be spiritually alert. Let us be alive 
sensitive unto God. Hallelujah. And sensitive to the plan and the program of God in all of its phases. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For salvation is so complete for all the peoples of the earth. And Lord, we just believe thee this night. Hallelujah. For a release of Soviet Jews from Russia. We believe thee, Lord, for the ingathering of Jews from all of the eastern countries. We believe thee, Lord God, for an ingathering of the Jews from all of Africa. Hallelujah. Down in the south. We believe thee, Lord, for an ingathering of the Jews from all of the western nations, Europe, and Lord, America, and South America. We just believe thee for a glorious ingathering. Let's pray in the spirit together a moment. Let your faith be released. Hallelujah, hallelujah. O bariti ala mandarisi ashanaya. O hallelujah, hallelujah. Amandari biandaya. Hallelujah, ha ha. Hallelujah, si andaramandai. Pray in tongues a little bit. Let God birth it in your spirit. O rabiandaramandai.